Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now these guys have found something very interesting. So they say that, do you know that there are some animals which are exclusively found in a particular area. So he means to say that that particular animal is found only in one particular area and it is not found anywhere else. Now people are quite surprised that, okay. That is also possible. So is this also possible that some animals are very specific to their location? Well, yes, it is quite very much possible that some animals inhabit only in a particular area. So for instance, take the example of the flying squirrel. All of you would have seen squirrel. We all know how it looks like. It runs very fast. But have you ever seen a flying squirrel? Many of you would have seen if you have visited some of these places where they are exclusively found. But otherwise in our day to day life we do not commonly see the flying squirrel. So this flying squirrel is something which is exclusively found in certain areas. So where do we see uh, this flying squirrel? It is exclusively found in the Panchmari National Park. So just now we were talking about the Panchmari National Park. So here you exclusively see this big sized flying squirrel. So these kind of species which are found exclusively in some specific areas, they are called endemic species. So now we are going to discuss about some of the endemic species. So what are endemic species? So these are species which are unique to specific geographic locations. Now, before we talk about endemic species, what do you mean by species? Well, species are those group of organisms which can reproduce amongst themselves. So they are group of organisms that can reproduce amongst themselves. So what do we mean by that? Let us take few examples to understand it better. So when you talk about a dog, and th think of a cat. So do you think that a dog and a cat can be produced together to produce something in between? Not really. So dogs can reproduce only with dogs. Similarly, cats can reproduce with cats. Humans can reproduce with humans. So because they all belong to the same species. So animals belonging to the same species, they can reproduce amongst themselves to produce new organisms. However, when we talk about dog, dog is a very broad term. So even in dogs, you have many different species of dogs. So one, a dog belonging to one species cannot reproduce with another dog belonging to another species. So they cannot breed with each other. So all organisms which can breed amongst themselves, which can reproduce amongst themselves, they are called species. Okay, so now these endemic species are those animals which are specific to some geographic locations. So let us look at some examples. So we have again taken the same example of the Panchmari National Park in Madhya Pradesh. So here if you talk about some of the endemic species. So in plants, some endemic species of this location is the sal tree and the wild mango tree. So these are some of the trees which are not found anywhere else other than the Panchmari National Park. So these are the endemic plants. So we will use the term flora that is endemic flora would include sal tree and wild mango tree. So similarly what are the endemic fauna that means what are the animals which are exclusively found here. So one example I already gave in the previous slide that is the flying squirrel. In fact, this flying squirrel, it is quite big in size also when compared to the normal squirrel. There is also another type of squirrel which is found here that is called the giant squirrel, the big sized squirrel. So these are some of the endemic fauna of Panchmari National Park. Let us take some other example like the Kaziranga National Park. The, where is Kaziranga National Park located? Just find it out for yourself. Just try to locate the various national parks in India and where each of them are located. So Kaziranga National Park, if you talk about the endemic flora. So when you talk about flora, that is the plants. So some of the plants which are commonly found here are marshland, elephant grass. So these are some of the 
flora of this region. If you talk about animals, one example of um, in, in fact, if you, when you talk about uh, Kaziranga National Park, Indian rhinoceros, as you can see in the picture. So, Indian rhino is something which is uh, very, very popularly found in Kaziranga National Park. Other than that, also you have swamp deer, wild water buffalo. We also have a very high density of tigers present in uh, the Kaziranga National Park. In fact, you will be amazed to know that there are 479 bird species which exist in Kaziranga National Park. So that is a big number, 479 species of birds, different types of birds are present here. In fact, there are 42 reptile species which are present in Kaziranga National Park. So it is a very diversified national park where a huge variety of plants and animals are present. However, there is a bad news related to the endemic species and that is that they are higher risk to extinction. They are more likely to become extinct. What do we mean by become extinct? Something which gets lost forever. So on the screen itself, I have shown you the most common example of extinction and that is the dinosaurs. So do you see dinosaurs now? They don't exist anymore. So where do you see them? We see them only on the TV, only on movies. So that's where we see dinosaurs. But they do not exist in reality anymore. But is it a virtual thing? It is not because they existed once upon a time. So how come they vanished all of a sudden? That's because gradually they started reducing in number long, long time back a large number of dinosaurs existed on earth but over a period of time their numbers kept on reducing and finally their number decreased to zero so when their number decreased to zero after that what happened there was no dinosaur existing on earth so when no dinosaur exists then obviously there will be no dinosaur coming up again in future and that's how they became extinct and this is how a species become extinct so whenever the number of a species is reducing very fast, so it is like a check for us that the species is nearing its extinction. So we need to preserve and conserve those species. So endemic species are at higher risk of extinction. Now why do you think so? Because these species are present only in some very specific locations. So they are not present everywhere. So it is quite obvious that if a particular type of animal is present only in a particular area so any mishap that takes place in that area might cause damage to all the animals of that area now since the species is not existing in any other area so we end up losing the species forever because it is not existing in multiple areas so that is why endemic species are at higher risk of extinction so let us have a closer look at the reasons of its higher extinction one is loss of habitat. Now, due to human exploitation or due to forest fires, so forest fires could be one reason, region, oh, uh, so forest fire could be one reason of loss of habitat. Another reason could be human exploitation like deforestation, breaking down the trees and cutting or clearing of the entire forest. So these could be some reasons. Now when you clear off the entire forest, obviously the animals living there, they are going to lose their habitat. So many of them would die. So now just for an instance, let us assume if we talk about the Panchmari National Park, there are certain uh, animals and plants which are very exclusively present there. For example, the wild mango tree. It is present only in Panchmari National Park and it is not present in many other places. So if any sort of damage happens to Panchmari National Park, what will happen to the wild mango tree? All of them will get finished, they'll all get over, they'll get damaged. Now, once they get damaged, now you do not have the same wild mango tree anywhere else. So you basically end up losing the entire species. So wild mango tree becomes extinct. So that is one cause that they are at higher risk of extinction. Second is introduction of new species to the area. Now let us suppose since the, the presence of that endemic species is highly dependent on the area. Now if some new foreign species enter inside that area, so that new species might attack these existing species 
or they might eat up these species and that's how these species might end. For example, again, let us take the same example of Panchmali National Park. As I said, that the flying squirrel is an endemic spe species of Panchmali National Park. Now, let us suppose that some huge animal, a different animal suddenly enters into Panchmali National Park and that animal feeds only on flying squirrel. So what will happen? It will eat up all the flying squirrel. Now once all the flying squirrel have been eaten up, so you are not left with any more either in Panchmari National Park or anywhere else because it, it was not existing anywhere else. Anywhere else. So that means if a, spe a new species enters which might attack the species, so they can attack the endemic species. So that is one risk. The other risk is that introduction of these new species, they might compete with the endemic species. That means they might compete with maybe the giant squirrel or the flying squirrel which was endemic species to Panchmari National Park. Now a new organism or a new animal came into Panchmari National Park whose requirements are the same as the uh, flying squirrel. So that means they became competitors to flying squirrel. So when they become competitors, so obviously giant squirrel or flying squirrel might have to face the impact. So due to the introduction of new species also, sometimes endemic species become extinct. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.